you very much uh, for the unreserved invitation and, and your attendance in this uh, last uh, days. And it is my pleasure to, to be here, to, to give this talk here, uh, because I uh, spent my sabbatical leave 10 years ago at Radger, and the best of uh, many positive experiences was this experimental math uh, setting. Okay, then this is a talk about the framework with and uh, uh, before I forget it, I am going to use this abbreviation that it is quite standard in the, in the for, for uh, in, in analytic number theory, but perhaps it is not so familiar for you. It's just putting the complex exponential as uh, it is. Okay, some warnings about this talk. I, my topic is analytic number theory, and I don't have too much uh, to offer in, in combinatoric or even in experimental math. Then don't expect nothing too interesting. To have. This is not a very big, a big deal. I'm perhaps you feel disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from the theoretical point of view, it is not a, a big thing, but uh, it is something that I have. Uh, I think uh, has some, some interest. For instance, there are some open problems that if you are a graduate student eager to get publication or do just for the fun of solving problems, then there is something here, and perhaps you are happy about this, or for other, some other people, perhaps this is a sign of incompleteness, then let's say that this is indifferent. And the point here, is that it's fully experimental. The motivation of this work is fully experimental. And we all are very happy about this. Then let me explain this point, giving an extra short abstract of the talk, or rather of the motivation of this, of this talk. I was, uh, some years ago, I was uh, writing some lecture notes for, for my graduate student, and at some point I included the theorem, uh, theorem in analytic number theory, and I said, okay, I am going to put an example here for illustration. Then I, I choose this, this example considering these points, like n equals 1, 2, 3, and so, then you have this complex number, then they are points in the complex plane. Then this theorem, theory, let's say, implies that this should be an Archimedean spiral. And the experiment A quite, a quite a different truth and obtain some strange pattern. Then this is quite surprising. This is a kind of paradox, and we explained in this in this paper uh, what is the explanation of this of this paradox. Then, uh, before uh, starting with, with uh, the, the theoretical analysis of the sample, we need some background about the uh, exponential sums and exponential integral. Then let, let me say something about exponential sums and integral. First of all, for people in analytic number theory, exponential mean here when one say exponential sum means sine and cosine. I mean, it's exponential in that sense. Okay? And for people in analytic number theory, this is kind of difficult, and this is a kind of easy. Let me illustrate the situation with an example. Imagine that you consider this sum. 
very a T is a real parameter. Okay? And let's say that you are studying this sum, this exponential sum, in this range. It seems simple, but this is related to the distribution of prime numbers. And even it is related to Riemann zeta function and to Riemann hypothesis. Then this is quite hard. There is a kind of limit, and it is really very difficult to go beyond this limit to get an upper bound for this for this sum. But think about the analog with exponential integral. Okay, this is undergraduate level, just saying a change of variable is the integral, or even simple, simple simpler. You can write something like this, and you can compute, compute the, the, the integral in an explicit way. And this is very simple. Okay, then there, there is a whole theory about this kind of uh, exponential sum, and there is a whole theory, complete, so to speak, theory about the exponential, exponential integral, and here we, we don't know a lot, a lot of uh, things. Then let me say something about the model for the exponential integral. Let's say that we have something like this. An integral, an exponential integral of this side. And to fix uh, the ideas, let's say that f is convex or concave. This means that this has constant sign. Then it can be proved that if you integrate this in an interval or even from minus infinity to infinity or whatever, you can apply here, if f prime is large, there is a kind of linear model, meaning that you can change this by something having, having derivative like lambda. And then it is possible to prove a bound like this. Let's say that in this case it's a small. And this is called van der Korte level. Okay? On the other hand, if you don't have a bound for the derivative, let's say in the extreme case that you have something like this, a zero, a stationary point, then you have a kind of quadratic model that I, I am not going to, to write. And there is a limit, even there is a, an asymptotic formula for the for the integral. And you have something like this, some constant. Okay, just the same. The, the formula is not so important. But the point is that this uh, is not a, a small in, in general. Then the, the idea, the moral of the story is if the derivative is large, then you have a kind of a good bound. And in the case in which it is not uh, large, then you have a kind of oscillatory term. This is, this is the idea. OK, then in principle, it is impossible to approximate a, a, a exponential sums with integral sum, with, uh, sorry, with uh, exponential integral. For instance, if you consider this sum, this is n. But if you consider the corresponding integral, there is no relation m of n because this integral is zero. Okay? In principle, no relation. No relation. But there is a relation that uh, people in number theory exploit uh, very often, and it is as follows. Consider the Dirichlet kernel, this humble exponential sum. And if there, you have something like bumps on the integers with area 1 and with like uh, the inverse of f. Okay? And in the rest of the cases, you have something oscillatory less important. 
this is very small in comparison to this when L is very large. Then you can do the following thing. You can write any exponential sum in this way. This exponential integral plus probably some small error. Okay? Forget about the, 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 the boundary, but forgetting about the, the boundary, this is quite a good approximation because uh, for short intervals, like here, uh, integration is almost the same, the same as evaluation. Okay, then we could have a formula like this. Let's try to exploit this, this phenomenon. Then uh, uh, let's say that uh, this n is much larger, larger than the derivative of f. Then the, the linear model that I mentioned applies, and this is a small. Then this integral, in general, is very small if n is larger than the absolute value of the, uh, if n is larger than the derivative okay, of, of f. Then we have something like this, and this can be proved. I am not going to state the exact theorem, but it can be proved that you can write something like this, plus some admissible error that I am not going to write, And i is an interval, a real interval of an interval containing all the drains of the derivative. As uh, I have said that this is uh, f uh, is concave or, or convex, then we can say something like this. Okay. Then this is the, the theorem that I state with all the technical things that I am not going to repeat here in my notes, and then I try to put an example. And the moral of the story here is you have an exponential sum, this is difficult, very difficult in general, and you can put this exponential sum as a sum of a, of a inter, of exponential integral. And the trick is that this sum can be very large, for instance, for instance, if the derivative is very large, then this is very bad, because you are changing something for by a, a, a larger sum, but sometimes one uh, gets something out, out of, of, of here. Okay, this is the, the result, and uh, here. And let's try to understand the paradox of the experiment. In my note, I took as an example this form. Okay? Because it was easy for me to compute the integral. Okay? But uh, we are going to put here alpha because it's more general and it appears in this way in the, in the paper. Then uh, what he's saying, this, this formula there, is that uh, if we consider this sum and let's say firstly that alpha is small. If alpha is small, the derivative at one is small, and when n is very large, this derivative of this function is almost zero. Okay? Then we have, according to this theorem, a good approximation by this integral. And this is a kind of miracle because we have something which is oscillatory, a sum, and we cannot use the, 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 the integral with some smaller order. But uh, this, uh, this uh, only works 
when, when alpha is very small, because in this case, then I have just a, a term in that sum. But if alpha is not so small, alpha is a fixed constant, let's say that somebody takes 10, for instance, if you take a alpha equals 10, then perhaps the derivative of 1 is not very small. But you can separate a number of terms, let's say 100 terms or 1,000 terms, and after this term, the derivative, the derivative is as small as you, as you want. Then, in general, you have something like this. You have that Sn, the sum, is like a constant, including the, this term, this first term, plus the corresponding integral coming from that formula, here a different constant, but only this integral. Because this interval, i, only contains a numbers that I are very close to zero. Then I am taking, in that formula, a n, small n, equal to zero. Then we have something like, like this with some small n. Okay, then I can compute this, this, uh, this uh, integral. It is quite easy to compute this integral, this integral, and then the result is like this. Simple 
those effects. Then my guess was that the plot of this point should be the same or very close to this. Then I took my computer and I will try and okay, first let's let's try it with alpha equals one half and it is true. I am plotting this point for alpha equals one half. Recall that the S M is given by this formula. Then when, when alpha equals one half, we get the, the result. Okay, fine. But now we take alpha equals one. And we get something like this. This doesn't look uh, too much um, uh, too much uh, spiral. Okay? And if we put uh, some other values, bigger values, then you get something very funny. And a lot of things, a, a lot of different things. Then the, the, the idea is to try to, to find a mathematical explanation of this. Why for alpha equals one, I see these vertical branches here, and um, for some other values, I get a very funny pattern, um, even more complicated than, than this. There is no spiral here. Nevertheless, we have this very good approximation, and this is not true. And we need here a mathematical model. Let's try to do it. Okay, trying with the with the computer, we observe something. Uh, curious here, um, in principle, this is quite different, and this even more is quite different from spiral. Okay, but imagine that uh, we join consecutive points in the, the following sense you consider this point, and you join to this one, and to this one, and so on. In other words, you la uh, label here the, the, the point and you put some lines joining this, this point. Then you recover the spiral. It is hard to believe, but believe or not, just joining the points in the previous picture, in the previous figure, then joining consecutive points, you recover this spiral. Okay, then uh, the, the effect, so to speak, is a kind of visual effect. Then let's try to explain here what is the motivation for, for this, this effect. Then let's say that we have here a value that is well approximated by uh, a t0, and after a loop, I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. After a loop, you are here, and you have here another. Okay. And what is the separation between these consecutive values, so to speak? The difference here has absolute value one. Then we have to the next value a separation like the one. But here the width of the spiral is one over pi alpha squared. This means that uh, when this happens, the point uh, in the next term, the next loop, meaning of this, that uh, visually we tend to join this point. The same as saying, okay, if I put this point, we see a line. 
But if I put here a lot of closer points, here, 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 and I repeat just the same thing for times, I don't see horizontal lines. There are horizontal lines here joining this point, but these are closer. Then I I see this this uh, ripple there, this this uh, this uh, wiggly line instead of uh, seeing the, the horizontal lines. Okay, then this is the idea the idea for the model. Then let's try to write it with uh, with an equation, and according to this model, then we should see a spiral when alpha is less than in this quantity, and when alpha is greater than this quantity, then something happens. And this, this corresponds to the, to the previous uh, picture, because for one half we see uh, a spiral, and for alpha equals one, we don't see it in the spiral. Then the model is like, like this. Let's think about the, this formula, and then the angle of this point is like this, according to, to this form. And then we want that is the same point as T0, the same angle, plus 2 pi. This means that T1 is close to the square root of T0 plus alpha minus 1 squared. This is the, the idea. OK, but uh, these are integers, because I am taking integral values here. Then t0, t1 are non-negative integers. Okay? And we know that uh, to compute the nearest integer, I should apply this formula. This is the formula for the nearest integer. Then instead of putting this symbol, if I want an um, exact formula, then I have to put here this, this integral value, meaning that just expanding this, this square and putting put in the, 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 the integral part, putting the integral part and expanding the square, we have something like this. 2 alpha minus 1, square root of t0, Okay, then finally, the mathematical model is a formula. Let's keep this, this formula here for a moment. by a formula like this to be connected. values of alpha. 
for instance, for this funny value, taking taking certain value of the T0, we have this. And it is obvious that the visually I see something like this. I see these ripples. Okay? Then uh, understanding this uh, recurrence formula is the same as understanding the pattern. Let's write it down. There is another example. Look at how different it looks from, from the other example, or 1.3. Up here, another example, a square root of 5. And perhaps this example is a little bit disappointing because we have this branch, and they are, I don't know how to, how to say it, they are together in some sense, all of this point, but we have some kind of uh, sub pattern there. Okay, we are able to study this. this, this then the final goal, the, 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 the idea is to try to find the solution of this recurrence form. This is the our goal. Then let's continue here. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
a period. N prime, when N prime equals N, if N is odd, and N half, if N is even. Okay, then this implies, we get this, this implies that the, the general solution in principle it is not so complicated, because if we have something like this, then we have a formula like this, where fr are quadratic polynomials, and r is the remainder of k when divided by, by m prime. Okay? But mm, this is a kind of uh, useless to explain, to fully explain the pattern because only says that the explicit formula is like this, but the point is finding the, the coefficients of this coefficient, of this uh, polynomial. Then to do this, we need some arithmetical, very simple arithmetical form, like this. If you have a non-negative number, it is possible to write in a unique way number like this, n i squared, these are uh, sorry, integral numbers, m is n i squared minus i plus j under this restriction. And what is the proof of this arithmetical property? The proof is essentially like this is considering this polynomial, the one appearing, appearing here, and noticing that at the end of this interval, we have the same value just with, uh, with a shift. Involving a lot of integral parts and so on, that I am 
not writing, but something a little bit more complicated than, than, than this. And what is R? R is the remainder of this value modulated. Then, uh, two questions, just to, to, to finish the, the, the talk, two questions for, for you. Related to the, these open problems. First of all, if you check the second uh, finite differences with the computer, you will see that the most of the time they are zero. Uh, with two exceptions. consequence of, of, of our study, but the uh, challenge for you, that I don't know how to solve, it is possible to give an elegant proof of this, with it exactly, and the big challenge here is trying to understand the rest of the case. If alpha is not the square root of a natural number, is there a general solution, explicit general solution, something like this? Perhaps this is our guess. Something related to the continued fraction of, of alpha or something like this. Okay, and I am running out of time, but uh, let's see. In you, a moment, you I have, have to six minutes left. Ah, six, six yeah. minutes. Okay, okay. Then I, I have a lot of, a lot of time. Okay. Then I. Uh, anyway, I am going to put the, the video to explain the, the situation. Then let me say what I are displaying here. Then imagine that I put alpha very small. According to the model, if alpha is less than 1 over the square root of pi, we should see a spiral. Okay? Then I am going to put all of these values, the values between 0, 0, 5, and 3, uh, as a frame, as frames in, in a video. Then at some point, we will see alpha equals 1, that I am able to explain because it's the square root of 1, alpha equal the square root of 2, that I am able to explain, and so on, and the square root of 9. Okay, let's say that this is it. Okay? And this uh, have more or less the same shape that the, we saw something like some branches here in the, in the odd case and some different shape but with branches also in the in the even case like in this one or some other, some other cases but in the rest of the cases something strange happened at the beginning here we see the spiral and the spiral should disappear when alpha equals the square root of pi something close to it and this is like almost uh, one half this is a value. Then you see some patterns appear there, and then we see some patterns that appear and disappear, and you can check the, the richness. And at some point we have seen at one, I forget to, to say, uh, one, uh, let's say at two, at two is, is less evident, but uh, anyway, at two you see that these uh, vertical branches and um, perhaps at the square root of 3, 1.7, we see again the branches. You see, you see in just in a moment in the frame these vertical branches. And all of this interval, I am not able to explain this. We are only able to explain this 
part and this discrete set of values. But what is the explanation of this funny uh, picture with these uh, wiggles and these this, this, uh, this ripples uh, and these this waves? It's a mystery for, for us and perhaps related to the, to the continued fraction of, of alpha. Okay, then this is all. Thank you very much for your attention. Question, please. Uh, could, could we go back to the plots of the TK on the other tab, third tab? So what, why aren't these spirals? Maybe I forget exactly what TK is supposed to be, but uh, these TKs are almost like a straight line out. Why aren't, why aren't they spiraling again? Because when you plotted sort of the points in succession a few slides ago, you actually did see the spiral here. Uh, no, no, but the spiral here, okay, there, there is no spiral here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not that yeah. fine. But uh, my, point, my point was that uh, if you join the points, I mean, here, right. the plot of this point is just joining this, uh, it's the same point, just join this to this, or if you prefer this to this, just put, put, put a straight line between, between them. Then you recover the spiral. Then my point was that the, the, the spiral is there in the background, but there is a kind of more effect, and I don't know how, how, how to say it, something that we see is another thing. Because in this picture, it uh, turns out that this point, for instance, is closer to this than the corresponding one just going through the spiral. And this is then visually. You see something vertical in some sense, and with some curves here. Okay. Yes, I have a quick question. So, in, in the video, you showed the, the center of the picture changed, right? Over time. Um, yes, yes. Yeah. Do you have a pattern for that? Like yeah, yes. Yeah. Very good question. Uh, let me just uh, uh, have I, um, Okay. Uh, first of all, there are two things. Uh, first of all, I don't know what is exactly the question about the, the, the two things, but as you said, the, the center changes. Mm -hmm. And there is another thing that it is not so obvious, but perhaps you can guess here, that a circle appears in the center, okay? Some empty circle. Mm -hmm. Then it is possible to explain it uh, with this theorem that I didn't write about the relation between exponential sums and, and uh, exponential integral. Then the, the distance to the center depends on this term that you separate at the very beginning. And then you can say something about them, and this missing point corresponds to this empty circle. Then it is possible to, to say how they behave asymptotically, and then it is possible to, if, for, for, for instance, for very large values, let's say 100 or something like this, you, you will see something like this. Here something like this, and then you enter in the, in the pattern. You see something separate here. And it is possible that the answer, I, I know it is not a very complete answer, but the answer is using this relation with the, the exponential integral and computing this integral, it is possible to prove that there is a growing contribution with alpha of this first term. Then you have this separation that you can study and characterize. And even you can prove that there is an empty circle in the, the center that uh, gets uh, larger with, with alpha uh, when, when alpha works. Okay? Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Chimiso so again. So wanted to 